Carlsbad structure, plans for white, part two, central build up with F3, E and E4, a very strong plan. This is DM Talks with uh, another episode on the Carlsbad structure, which we know from the Queen's Gambit, the Semislav, uh, the Grinfeld, uh, the Karakan exchange. So it is an important structure and it will make you a much stronger player if you know the plans and know what to do. Uh, and this is what we're all here to learn. Anyway, this is part two. This is uh, another plan. In part one, we looked at the minority attack, the, the, the most uh, well-known plan for white and maybe the strongest, but this plan today is also very strong. Uh, so please uh, uh, take a seat and uh, strap your seatbelts because it's gonna be a, a nice game with Gary Kasparov, who played this line for white and uh, who was a connoisseur of this line against Ulf Andersson, who's known as a great defender and uh, who really, really, really hates to lose. Uh, and sometimes uh, you just can't help it, right? Let's see the game. Uh, Ka uh, Kasparov starts with d4. I will go here and... Um, and Ulf Andersson is not afraid to go into the main line, uh, Queen's Gambit declined exchange variation, which is sort of the pure uh, Carlsbad structure. I think it was from this line, uh, the structure was named, but I, th I think it, 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 it is a very, very interesting structure that you must know. And Queen C2, another option is E3. And, um, and all this is, is, is well known. And in, in the, the other game, we saw that white played with knight on f3. Um, and, and the knight on f3 uh, stands very well. It uh, covers e5, uh, covers g5, and uh, has a great influence in the center and looks sort of harmonious. Uh, so, but there is another square, square for the knight. And the idea here is fundamentally different, rook e8. Uh, actually, white can even castle queenside. This is plan number five uh, in, in white's arsenal, and we will look at that in the fifth video on the Carlsbad structure of white plans. Uh, but in this video, we will look at castle queen, uh, kingside. And, and this is sort of the, the main art. The, the idea is, is basically to go e4, maybe e5, maybe e4, and blast black away. Uh, sometimes, uh, or very quite often, the f uh, file will be open, and, uh, and this uh, will give white good chances to, uh, to attack black king. And even though at the moment, um, after bcb6, black's knights here, they are all covering h7, um, leaving this battery sort of uh, not so impressive. It doesn't take many moves for, for this uh, coverage of the pawn to be gone. So black has to be careful and white is putting a lot of pressure. He will put his rooks and there's a bit, big debate among the white players here. Uh, this rook here, does it belong on d1 or here or here? Um, that's the big question, I don't know. Uh, I, I tend to, to, to prefer the d1 square when I'm playing bridge. Uh, but in this game, uh, Kasparov uh, put the rook here, and uh, when Kasparov does something, everybody should usually listen. Uh, this, by the way, was played in Bill 4 in 1988, was part of the World Cup, uh, which was, has nothing to do with the, the current World Cup, which is a totally different format. Um, Black is getting ready for... Um, for uh, a plan with maybe c5 uh, and anyway it makes sense to have uh, this x-ray if effect on the queen uh, another plan uh, which we will look at is, is is not to play with bcb6 but with to play with g6 and uh, knight e6 and get the knight out and, and making this sort of uh, battery bad. When we look at uh, plans for black, we will look at that because I think that's a better plan than the plan chosen here. And I think that white is already better because black is a bit cl clumsy. Also, there is this 
can be annoying and hitting this this bishop and do you really want to give away this white squared bishop um, this looks dangerous right okay king h1 normal uh, and i think black is more white is more or less ready to play e4 uh, and and black sort of said okay i will i will uh, do something first and when to play e4 is always uh, the big question. I think white could play e4 here. Uh, you always have to be careful that not something c5 comes or, or some other uh, annoying counterplay. Uh, you have to be able to f mostly follow up with e5 or take on d5 and f4, f5 or something. Uh, Kasparov dis decided to play it a bit slower, knight f4. Uh, just getting the knight out. He's, 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 he's. We, we know this will come, but we don't know when it will come. So he's, he's, he's saying, okay, I have better prepare, preparing uh, moves than you have. Rook c7. And when black's best, if that's black's move, best move, then I'm sure white is right because he has uh, definitely more space. Queen f2, king uh, to the king side. I think the the queen will look rather good here. Uh, another plan actually for white is, is sometimes to go with this pawn. We see this in the Nimso Indian, which can also have the Karlsbad structure. I forgot to mention that opening. Knight f6, um, and now comes e4. And uh, this was, um, I think, uh, Ulf had reckoned that, that, that it could not come here, because otherwise he would not have played knight f6, because he doesn't want to get kicked back. He took, took. And um, attacking the pawn, and if you take, then he takes with the knight, and and all looks good. And you see that uh, that Ulf is is very good with uh, with with covering things. So so even though it seems that that there are some holes, they are at the moment they are all covered. But there is a problem, and that's the problem. D5. Uh, attacking uh, the bishop, just going forward, and this is uh, the, this is where it, it becomes a little bit difficult to play. You have to be able to uh, to find things like that, and and after this, this is the inter intermediate move that uh, that's really the problem for black. Uh, the the rook is attacked, and in such an open position, uh, some some sort of uh, sacrifice of the exchange simply doesn't work. So he has to move, and he can take back. And here you would, of course, love to take on d5, but it runs into a pin. And because of, of this square, you cannot uh, enforce uh, or make d5 stronger in any way. So you, he has to go, and this was definitely not the idea. And uh, but it just goes back. Very simple. Um, and has a strong pawn and a great initiative. At the moment, the threat is is, is d6. And uh, and after this, he just took a pawn. Uh, and uh, even though Kasparov is a great attacker, if he can just take a free pawn, he will take it. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is um, is for sure. And here, black has absolutely no compensation. Actually, white is better. Um, it's transformation of advantages uh, just using uh, the space and Kasparov did have great technique in, in things like this he was uh, very good at uh, at just finding the way to, to just kill all uh, counterplay and, and win without problems it's very, it was very seldom that he, he had a winning position like this and, and messed it up um, which is of course normal for, for strong players take the, and, and white is a, is, a, is a clear pawn up and the the one of the well the two pawns here are passed so uh, if he just avoids any kind of counterplay he will win rather easily and the best way to play this technically is of course to exchange pieces not pawns pieces you want to uh, exchange all the pieces because the pawn ending is easily win but of course, a minor piece ending is 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 probably even easier, and so why black is is struggling to uh, to coordinate, and here comes the pawn, and well, it it's not really, and you find this 
uh, it's not really interesting and, and of course you can resign here um, and here he did resign the this this is of course hopeless against a, a player like Kasparov uh, actually he will probably lose a piece at the moment for the a pawn anyway this was the plan with f3 e4 when it looks good we, when we look at black side we will uh, we will see that maybe things are not so simple uh, but but this line is very strong and you should definitely know it because it's like the minority attack when white starts attacking you with the b-pawn when, when white starts to build up with f3 e4 you can easily get sort of blown away without uh, even having known what's going on so be very careful this was dm talks with another episode on the carlsberg structure i hope you enjoyed this episode thank you for watching